Hi there, welcome to episode two of Simple Homemade Life. And this is the episode where we answer the burning question, what is up with the farmhouse? Real food, organic gardening, DIY remodeling, and how to make it doable and easy. Simple Homemade Life. <laughs> so behind us, you can see the 100 year old farmhouse that we bought a couple years ago. And if you've seen any of the videos or read the blog posts or listened to the podcast, you know we've been working on it all that time with a goal to move in as soon as possible. <laughs> but if you've seen any of the other videos like our farmhouse tour, you can understand that there's a lot to do on this place. And so maybe that's why it has taken us <laughs> so long. In this episode, we're gonna just talk about some of the kitchen remodeling ideas that we have. Um, we're going to, it's a super important area if anybody's done a kitchen and there's a lot of decisions. So we're gonna kind of walk you through some of that. So before we could redo the inside of the kitchen, we had to get some stuff out of it. And that included uh, an entire wall running through the middle of the room that had a window in it. And we would kind of laugh because like, why would you want a window on the inside of your house? Like right? you could, you'd like be in the kitchen, walk through the door and be still inside the house looking through the window. And I thought maybe it was because you could want to, you'd want to do a drive through inside your house. But <laughs> actually there's a real reason, right? It was a porch. It was an yeah. enclosed porch. That used to be the outside of the house. Okay. Well, so anyway, to take a wall out, you've got to have something to hold up, um, that part of the house, the ceiling, and in this case, the second floor. And so we thought, well, we've seen this done before. You just put a beam across there. And so uh, in our county, um, they're fairly restrictive on how you do remodeling on your house and you have to have a permit. We already had a permit to do the remodeling on the house. So we just added this on as an addendum that you can do. That's a little trick right there. <laughs> Don't get a new permit, add, add it on as, a, as an addendum. And so we did that. I thought I was gonna to have to hire a designer to design this thing and it was so simple. And I thought, this is gonna be, it's gonna be a beam. It's gonna have a four by four on each side. You know, it's gonna look like Stonehenge and hold up the ceiling. Why, why do I need a designer? So I found out that all I really needed to do to submit to the county was just a really crude kind of a scale plan. And so I went and I um, downloaded some graph paper off the internet, printed it out, spent a couple nights with a thick pencil trying to trying to draw out my plan and then I got it pre-approved with engineering and then I finally got it approved and went to the county got the whole thing approved long story short was very happy so that was all done we're ready to go and so um, the other trick when you put in a beam is you need to prop up the ceiling when you're taking the wall out so the house doesn't collapse while you're working on it and so I did that I had it all prepped. It was a Saturday morning. I had, I had donuts. I had guys coming to help me put up the beam. And it actually went great. We just in a couple minutes, we, we lifted it up. We got it into place. We got that thing nailed in and we got it up tight against the joists. And I just thought we did a really great job. And then for the next couple days, I did all the, the braces and I just really got that thing put in there. And I thought it looked great. And I was so proud because I was going to call the inspector so the inspector could come out and approve it and just tell me what a great job I did for a guy that didn't really know what he was doing. So <laughs> we're in the house and this is kind of part of the funny story we alluded to in the last episode. So I'm walking in and um, despite COVID-19, the inspector, he's willing to stand, you know, a distance from me and just in case he has any notes, anything that I, I need to do. And so he comes walking in and he looks up at the beam and the first thing he says to me is, you know, you put that in upside down. <laughs> And I was like, what? no, and, and, and I had not seen it. Three guys, we had not seen it. It was a, a glue lamb beam that I had to special order and they're stamped across the top, like every three feet or across the bottom was a stamp that said top, top, top. You just look up and you can see it. Well, now I know I haven't painted it yet. Here, here, here's a shot of it right there. Like none of us had seen it. I, with, you know, one of my friends, he's done a lot of construction. We just, we had no clue. So anyway, we fun. can laugh about that now because, um, Why? Here's, because <laughs> the engineer is your friend yeah. and the inspector, they'll basically okay anything that an engineer has signed off on. And so I just shot a quick uh, email to our engineer and she said, um, let me check. You know what? 
it's great. Upside down works as well. So we'll just, we'll sand it, we'll paint it, we'll sand it off where it says top. And so we can laugh about it now. But the yeah, was dodged. beams have a top. <laughs> beams have a top and a bottom, I learned. Well, so now we've got the basic structure. That, that got rid of that wall and we can now fit our kitchen. And so um, we thought we'd take you inside and I'd kind of show you what we're planning. Okay, so we're totally designing this space. You can see that it's just completely gutted. And we have a mock-up with tape and newspaper of where we want windows and cabinets. So I thought I'd share that with you real quick. And here on the floor, you can see we've set out where the island's going to be. And my X's are for the overhang of where the stools. So the stools will come back here. And that'll be the island with the sink and dishwasher in it. Then we'll walk around this way and this will become, this was where the wall was. And now this is our work area kitchen. And so the sink will be here on the island. This will be a stove with cabinets on each side. And we're gonna have windows here and then the stove hood in between with, um, so no cabinets up above, just windows and the stove hood and we're thinking of putting a built-in in this wall to have a built-in cabinet for things like spices and be, what you'd normally have in upper cabinets. And then over here is where our furnace is and we're making that into a pantry slash furnace room. So we'll have a lot of storage there for appliances too. So we're kind of just playing around and we're hoping we can order some of the things soon and get started on it. So as far as what else is up with the farmhouse, I thought we'd just give you little glimpses of what is happening in the addition part and where we're at with that. So that's the laundry room windows. We've got our lights above it, so they'll have lights. That's where the laundry room will be below the windows. Um, we were able to salvage the shiplap in here, the original shiplap, and we'll paint it white. Where the window was um, in the far wall will become either a shelf or a drying rack. So that will all that will all work out. Um, we've shown you that the sheetrock is all done in the master bedroom. We're gonna put wood over that. And then we do have the taping and mud done in the closet. And with the bathroom, it's sheetrocked, ready for um, some beadboard. I think it's, some, it's the beadboard and not the shiplap that we have, we can go on it. And the tile is, we've gotta do the tile for the shower. Oh, and we were able to salvage the ceiling in here and replace some of the original wood. So we'll paint that too. Once we figure out how the holes, <laughs> how to deal with the holes. On the kitchen ceiling, a good thing has been the existing tongue and groove, which is actually in pretty good shape. It needs a little bit of scraping over here and we're gonna repaint it. But when we tore the sheetrock off, we were really happy to find um, a beadboard tongue and groove which is really cool and looks old like the house and that's also what we're going to do for the kitchen walls the, uh, the beadboard is underneath the sheetrock which really has not been that bad to take off of course under there then is a bunch of wallpaper which we will soak and get wet and that will come off it looks like this when you get the wallpaper off of it. And of course it needs to be painted. So now the challenge is how do we match that? Because we have this whole wall in the kitchen that um, we need to have match the original beadboard tongue and groove. So I'm gonna show you. When we took apart the walls in the bathroom, we harvested a bunch of the beadboard tongue and groove like you see here um, it has the little the beadboard has the little groove down it we also got a bunch of flat tongue and groove which can go other places but in order to match what we're doing in the kitchen it has to be this beadboard as you can see with old nails it can be a challenge to get these off in one piece but um, when we put them back up on the wall, it won't matter if some of the tongues or some of the grooves are a little cracked because when you push them up together, it will look fine. 
The tongue and groove that came out of the bathroom were completely coated with wallpaper like this. So what I did was I set a bunch of them out on the driveway in the rain for like two days. And then I set them up on the trailer that was getting ready to go to the dump. And I just took a scraper and it, the wallpaper just scraped off. It had softened the glue. And I just put the old wallpaper and glue in the trailer ready to go to the dump. And it, it left me with clean boards. Unfortunately, there's a bunch of boards still attached to the wall that we're gonna have to spray with water in order to clean them off. A lot of these reclaimed boards are 10 feet long and seeing them all stacked like this, it looks like I have a lot of them. But the question is, am I gonna have enough to redo all the parts in the kitchen that are gonna show? We are going to find out. The floor in the living room here and then also in the kitchen is the original fur, the 100-year-old flooring that was originally in the house, and we really wanted to keep it. But unfortunately, there's no subfloor. This is the subfloor. So if there's a crack, it just goes right down to the insulation. Plus, a lot of the wood's in pretty rough shape. Um, so it's solid, and we decided that we we're going to get wood and put it over the top. Um, it, there's just not enough there to do a floor, to leave this original floor. And of course, even if the original floor was in good enough shape to recondition and to use, um, the floor out here that's on the porch addition just does not match at all. It's not the same kind of wood. It doesn't go the same direction. And you can see we've had to patch it. So that is further reason to put down new flooring over the top of all of it. So you can see there is still a lot to do. Yes, there is. And we're excited to just share it all with you as we do it. But uh, for this next episode, we're going to go back out into the garden. And I'm going to share with you a little tip that I learned from an aunt about... Um, from my aunt, an aunt. <laughs> an aunt, just a little ant crawling along. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm gonna share with you a tip that I learned from my aunt a couple years ago that has just made trellising tomatoes way better. And it's using something nobody really uses that I've seen, a cattle panel. A cattle panel. Now, I had no idea what this was. I'm gonna give you a little spoiler here. It has absolutely nothing to do with cattle. You do not have to buy nope. a cow <laughs> to use this panel. But anyway, so you don't miss the episode where uh, Jamie gives the secret tomato gardening hack. Be sure to subscribe and we will see you next episode. Thank you for watching. Thanks. Bye.